This is Treat Him Right. This is a big hit. Chub Rock on the scene. Well, you know what? Uh, he's on the phone right now, and he wants to talk to you. Is he really? Please welcome the great Chub Rock. Yeah. Chub, what's Hardy. up? Hardy. Hardy. <laughs> Chub. Yo, what's going on, Playboy? Uh, how you doing, man? I'm chilling, man. I'm chilling. Did you, you, did you know he's a, he's a National Merit Scholar? No, this guy. This Dropped guy, out of Brown. you got to love this guy to pursue music. Seriously. Uh, do, you, do you remember the night I'm talking about? Of course I remember the night. We were out in the city. Yep. Uh, it was us, Mr. Blue. Mr. Blue, uh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> What's Mr. Blue? Mr. Blue is the name of a kid who's a DJ, right? Yeah. I haven't seen him in a while. Yeah, man. It was a good time. And you were living at the Chelsea Hotel. Oh, yeah, the famous Chelsea. We yeah, that, there, I think I was in the middle of the album trying to do that sixth album over there. So, yeah. And I think right. he was doing, uh, was it Mad TV? Yeah, me and Orlando were doing Mad TV. Yeah, Orlando so, Jones. Orlando Jones. When was the last time you talked to him? Uh, maybe about a year and a half ago, two years ago. What have you been up to, man? Man, there's a lot of stuff, man. I'm on the radio in New York at WBLS. And, uh, oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then, you know, just we're out there doing our shows and working on some TV stuff. Just having a good time, man. He's on the like radio. He's having a good time. What's that like? <laughs> I, I... <laughs> <laughs> no, that that was, a, that was a fun night for me, man, because, uh, like, I, I lived with Orlando. We were roommates, and he was a vegan vegetarian. And, oh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. He's always eating that nonsense, but. Yeah, li- literally, <laughs> like, I would go to Denny's and get something at 3 a.m., and uh, I put it in the refrigerator and next to something he's eating. So literally our refrigerator, we, we couscous next to moons over my hammy from Denny's. <laughs> <laughs> now, but you got. I, I never knew why he was into that craziness, man. I was a carnivore from, from birth. <laughs> <laughs> and that is, it's really one of the coolest things I've ever heard a person say. You got in the car and you said to Orlando, yo, they got any food for carnivores? <laughs> 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 and you know what? Uh, no, didn't you, uh, on a Howard Stern show, he had a, uh, when the East Coast, West Coast rap thing was, uh, at its, uh, at its height, he had a summit, and you were part of that, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. It was right after, uh, I think right after Tupac died, uh, Howard had me and, uh, Melly Mel and a few of the rappers on there. Right, yeah, yeah. I knew, I, 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 I was, uh, always wondering, um, uh, you know, uh, what happened, uh, what happened with that whole thing? And uh, you got any inside dope on what happened with Tupac? Where's, is he alive, living in Cuba? That's the rumor. <laughs> no, man. This guy was a guy that he went to jail for not even nine months and wrote like 10 quadrillion songs, man. And uh, I don't know. He was like George Orwell in that 1984 book. He just predicted a whole bunch of extra. <laughs> so, so, like, every time, you know, since his passing, his mom would throw out these albums that it was like, he was coming with a rhyme like, yo, in 2011, Shub was going to do an interview with Artie Lang and his partner. He's got to be alive. It's like not Nostradamus. Yeah. <laughs> with, with, so, like, without getting into too much detail there, is there any – there was a, a book that came out recently by an L.A. detective who claims that P. Diddy had Tupac killed and uh, – or, or, no, no, Chubb – uh, what's his name? Uh, Suge Knight had uh, Biggie Smalls killed in reaction to um, Tupac, Tupac getting, killed. getting killed. Any truth yeah. to that? I Me, mean, I personally, I, I don't know. I didn't read the book or nothing like that, but I think all of that was just some nonsense, man. Because it's funny that they had all these different conspiracy theories of what happened then. I just think some guys got caught up in some stuff that, um, you know, People just acted stupid, and it's unfortunate they happened. But I doubt any of them guys really had anything personal to do with any of that stuff. I mean, I could be wrong, but I doubt it. Hey, I hey, doubt Chuck. Because, I mean, it would have been so easy to investigate that and just prosecute those guys, man. And I, I just don't think that those things happen like that. I think, you know, I don't know. Pac had that issue with Vegas. Right. And, and you know, who knows what happened from that. You know, from that stemmed from that. I don't, I don't think Suge had anything to do with that. Chubb, you you were a pre med student at Brown. Let me ask you a question: What's harder, writing a rap song or uh, organic chemistry? Oh 
man. Let me tell you, man. Those days, you know, <laughs> when you when, when you come from that Jamaican household, man, they just they're pumping <laughs> education into you, like you know, like hey, man, we're in America now. Read a book, you know. <laughs> and I just rebelled at some point, and and then you know, luckily my mother was like, hey, man, you know, if you really want to try this, take a year and 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 see what can happen and. It was just a lucky year for me, you know, and for some reason that that was the call. And I got friends, man, that went and graduated and became doctors, and they're miserable. I got a couple, I got a, yeah, I, got a, I bet. I got, a, I got a couple of them trying to be actors right now. I'm like, yo, man, what, this call, you're a surgeon and you want to be an actor. Where did you, you know, grow? So, where did you grow up, Job? I am Brooklyn. Oh, in Brooklyn, yeah. Yeah, so you know, I mean, I mean, it's not the greatest thing to show kids, like, hey, man, you can. You can leave school to be a rapper. But, I mean, you know, you, said, you want them to get the education and everything. But, you know, when that art is calling you, what, what can you do? Yeah, you sound you sound like the type of guy that would succeed whatever you pursued, though. You know how tough it is to get into Brown, man? <laughs> no, I know. Absolutely. <laughs> so, but uh, it's pretty impressive. What was it like living at the Chelsea Hotel? How long did you live there for? Man, that was the best part of it all, man. Like, you know, I was living in Long Island, and... Um, the record company was in New York City, so they said, hey, man, you need to come here and be able to work with the producers you want to work with. And I was like, well, all right, cool. You know, maybe I'll just go back to Brooklyn and, and blah. He's like, no, 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 no. You need to be in the middle of Manhattan and get the vibe. And and then I went there, and really it was only supposed to be something short term. It was supposed to be like maybe a month and a half. But, you know, after a while, the, the people there, like the, the man who owned the place, Stanley Bard, was like, right. he was all about artists being in that building. And he, every time it was time for me to leave, he was like, no, 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 you can't leave. You can't leave. And, <laughs> you know, you got to, this is, this is what the building is. And, you know, Mickey Rock lived in there, you know, and <laughs> yeah, I don't for... the other guy's name that, uh, that was on The Sopranos who played uh, Christopher. Oh, um, Michael Imperioli. Yeah, he was in there and. Shaka Khan was in there, and, and it was just like this this whole artist thing, you know. And Chelsea ain't even like that no more. Now it's all right. It's kind of it's kind of a, it's kind of more money thing, you know. It was you know back then it was like straight artistry, man. It was meant, there were people in there paying for their room and board with paintings and all that. You know? Right. <laughs> Yeah, for for people who don't know, the Chelsea Hotel, it's on West 23rd Street in Manhattan, and it's fa it's famous for artists living there. The poet Dylan Thomas was living there when he supposedly drank himself to death uh, at the White Horse Tavern on Hudson Street. And, oh, yeah, uh, even uh, Jackson Pollock. Jackson uh, Pollock used, lived there. He used to stay there in between beating his wife. He used to stay up in there. <laughs> <laughs> and uh but supposedly bob dylan wrote like positively fourth street you forget the biggest guy that lived there sinbad <laughs> comedian <laughs> sinbad was there. we're talking to the great chub rock the new york based rapper do you remember the last thing you said to me that night chub probably good night but i can't really remember um <laughs> It was just me. Or we lost Orlando at some point, and it was just me and you. And uh, I was going to take you back to the to the Chelsea Hotel. It was like five in the morning, but you you said that you had to go to a studio because your friend yeah. was re was recording. And you leaned over to me and you said, uh, "All right, man, I'm going to drop some lyrics for this." And then you said the N word. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I can't. Uh, I can't repeat it for obvious reasons. But it was just one of the smoothest things I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> And you just yeah. shook my hand, and you said, I'm going to drop some lyrics for this. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, back then, it was like, you know, it was like that one, it was just that time there where everything was going on in the city. I mean, Tribe Called Quest would be recording right. over there on 27th Street. Uh, Public Enemy was recording on Green Street. Pete Rock might have been uh, at the cutting room. It's like everything was going, we were, we were, we were, um, recording at Unique and Quad, and all these places, like, you could just walk to these places, you know, D&D &D Studio with Premier and Guru Gangstar was on 32nd Street, so it was like, it was just all, it was just an electrifying time, and everybody would work from basically, like, 12 o'clock to, like, 7, 8 in the morning. Right. You know? And that was just the vibe. So, and, and sometimes they'll just call you to come for the vibe. You're not even, you don't have nothing to do with the session. Hey, Chubb, just come and make us laugh and, 
and we're going to try to get a song out tonight. And, and that's how it was. Now it's it's kind of it's not really you know that way. You know everything is like kind of closed door fast food sessions, and you, you know it ain't the same. It ain't the same as that time. Treat 'em right is a great is a great song. I always loved it. Like, how long does it take you to write a song like that? I actually wrote that song in about thirty minutes. Really? Yeah, I wrote that song in about in about thirty minutes, and it was funny. I was in England doing a couple of shows because I was always like that. I went to England for like two shows in six days and stayed like a month and a half, and I, and I stayed there with total <laughs> strangers. Right. I was like, yo, man, if you got food in your refrigerator and a beverage, <laughs> I'm there. <laughs> and we just, they, they took me everywhere. Took me to find records, took me to old record stores because I was always a collector. And I found the right groove for the record. And, the, you know, and I was always just shocked that people were showing me love. So I, I actually, the song was just about saying thank you to people. And, and that's all it was. But it was like 30 minutes and. You know, I didn't really think it was going to be a, a big record, but, you know, it, it turned out that way. But, um, you know, it's just a – I'm so glad to be part of that time in hip-hop. And, you know, let me tell you, Artie, it, it's more than my man who called me today who said, hey, man, Artie was talking about you. Somebody else told me that one time, oh, maybe a couple of years ago, yo, man, I didn't know you know Artie Lang. And I was like, oh, the Caucasian cat from the Durant. He was like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah but, and I, and he was like, "Yo, man, this guy was on on the air talking about you, man. Saying you guys are friends." I was like, "Yeah, man, I haven't seen him in a long time." Well, and, it's, fu- it's funny, but it's just I I love. It was a one of those situations where it was such. We had so much fun that night. I don't know if you remember the whole thing, but we just had a blast hanging out. And it's the only time I ever met you. And uh, like I, you, you ever meet so like Nick? You ever meet somebody like just one night? But then you miss them, like you feel like you've known them forever. Like, like uh, uh, no, <laughs> like no, I, I, never. After like, I hung out with Chubb, <laughs> me, Chubb Rock, this guy, Mister Blue in Orlando, sure, they came to see me do stand up at this place down on Ludlow Street. Then we went out yeah. and hung out and did some bar hopping. And, and uh, I don't know, man, I just like retelling that story because I'm a fan of yours. And um, I've told it several times that how much fun I had and. Uh, I'm glad somebody uh, heard it, and uh, I'm glad you called in. It's good to talk to you, buddy. Oh, Thanks. Definitely, 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 man. I wish you all the best. And it's just it's incredible, man, because it's, it's, it's true. You know, when people meet each other and it, it's that, that connection. I remember when we went there. We went to that place where you was doing the stand-up. There was a few other of the of your co- of your, um, you know, your ensemble cast from Mad TV that came to support you that night as well. Right. And we was in there just joking around with them, and and Mr. Blue was trying to kick some lyrics to some little <laughs> chick there. And me and Orlando was, you know, making jokes at everybody, and, and then you were there. And I was like, oh, man, this is a nice vibe. And then, we, then yeah, we all went to different places. And it was a, it was a good time when you remember it vividly. Yeah, it must have been a good night. I'm glad you remember it, because I do, and I'm glad somebody I, – I, I really uh, – I really have missed you since then, and I'm uh, I'm glad you're uh, you're uh, doing well, and it's good to talk to you, man. I uh, I haven't talked to Orlando in a while. We were roommates for a long time. It's like it's crazy how time goes by, you know. Yeah, man. Thanks. I mean, that was Jesus. I that was maybe what twelve years ago, maybe. That was like ninety six. That was like fifteen years ago. Fifteen years. Yeah. And that's, yeah, that's crazy to talk about. Stories from 15 years ago, man. But, you know, Orlando was a guy that, you know, also we had those kind of nights too, man. And, and literally we only – we met each, we met each other. We, me, you, and Orlando had that one night. Me, Orlando, and had probably three nights. But it's stuff that we always will remember. Right. You know, just always joking around and having a good time and and, and, and you know – Giving people help. Well, I'm I'm glad somebody told you about it, and I'm really glad you called in, man. And uh, I hope to see you again. Thank you, Definitely. Chubb. We appreciate it, buddy. You too. Stay well. Take care. Be well, Chubb. Chubb Rock. You guys, just to, just to do my friend Chubb Rock a little justice, p- play treat him right. This is how good. Listen to how good this guy is at rapping. Well, you, like you, rapping's one of those things. 
we were talking about this. Like when it first came out, oh. I said rapping isn't a talent; it's just rhyming. And then you hear someone who can't do it, then you go, "Oh my god, it is a talent." Oh yeah, it's, a, it's like, so, like well, Snoop. Snoop's my favorite because he's got melodies in there. Yeah, he just like he's smooth and yeah, it's like a good whiskey or something. But listen to how unbelievable this guy is at rapping. This I feel is, like Debbie. I, I feel like Debbie Boone when you're talking about rap. This is from 1990. Treat him right by the great Chub Rock. Sharp rock jumps upon the scene with a lean and a pocket full of green. The green doesn't symbolize I made it on the top, but Robocop last year was a shock. The tone of the pop white cut shook your butt. Kids are screaming, the media says what? What kind of music is this for you to dance to? The man with the plan and the band demands you. Leave the smack and the crack for the whack for the vile and the knock and a smile like that. Leave the knife and the gun in the store and ignore temptation set by the nation. Racial game causes pain, he's a new rep. In your hearts and mind, never forget who set. Walk in, so when you walk in, you don't just want. Black on black, remember that it's important. Anyway, the shuttleless one bring forth the fun. No 30 hatred. minutes. The yeah. almost done. No time for sleep. Jump in your jeep and pump up the funky beat. A holy. Beeper goes off, yo, smash it, then trash it. You're too young to be plumped in a casket. Just get your boys and bring the noise and just swing it. And party people, sing it. <laughs> That's good, man. 30 minutes. 30 minutes it took him. Uh, my producer just gave me Chubb's number. I'm going to give him a call. We're going to hang. Unbelievable. going to yep. hang again. We're going to try to recreate that night now that I'm Maybe. clean and sober and can't do anything. <laughs> Maybe he can write a closing number for us. Really, 15 years ago, and now I'm clean and sober, and the Chelsea Hotel has been turned into a crate and barrel, I believe. <laughs> they just sold that. He's right. <laughs> it's, this, it's over.